Okay, we're going to get started here. Um, I know, Melissa, you are in this class, and I just set up this class last minute as you are coming in here last minute as well. And it is Wednesday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time that I'm actually having this lecture, and you're probably not going to be in here because I just published the class literally a half hour ago. So we'll just kind of work with each other um, because you are the only one in this class um, getting this through. Uh, so that you can uh, have this credit um, going forward. I will work with you on extensions. Um, so, you know, I want you to succeed. So, you know, just kind of communicate with me as we go forward. Just a couple of things um, <clears throat> that because this is a last minute uh, planned effort here with um, not not planned effort, but last minute class that I picked up um, <clears throat> the lectures are um, going to be a little sporadic, so kind of you have to kind of be patient with me. I'm um, trying to work it with my other. Um, I'm, I also teach other classes as well, so you know we'll just kind of um, go with the flow in that regards. I do have set up lecture times uh, on on the days that are listed in the live sessions area. We'll take a look at that. Um, they are a little sporadic, as you'll see, and some of them may shift. So I will definitely give you a heads up if that were to happen beforehand. Um, just a lot of shifting around the next three weeks uh, with what's going on with my schedule here. But we'll, we'll get through it. And if anything, just listen to the recordings and um, we'll just kind of make it work. All right, welcome to DES 314 Advanced Color Theory. This is week one live lecture one, again Wednesday, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, we will be meeting again tomorrow evening Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I do have my daughter, and um, hopefully once she goes to bed, I can start this. She's four, so i just give you a little heads up. My name is April Biss. I don't know if I had you before, Melissa. You don't seem like a familiar name to me, so because of that, I'm going to introduce myself. You can call me April by my first name. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. Just a little bit about myself. I have a bachelor's of science degree as well as a master's uh, degree in graphic design. I went to uh, an actual uh, college here in Pittsburgh. Uh, it was a on-ground college for four years for my bachelor's. I worked 18 years in the industry. I've worked at ad agencies, publication companies. Um, I have my own freelance business. I just recently um, finished up a project for an author. I did a book cover, which was really interesting. Um, so I'm still working and practicing in the field and also teaching. I've been teaching um, for independence for about six years now. So uh, I, you know, I definitely love what I do. I love inspiring you guys and you guys inspire me too. So it's great. It's kind of like a give and take. we both give to each other. So, um, I have a four-year-old daughter, Amelia May. She is the light of my life. And uh, like I said, I might have her during some of the evenings that we're doing lectures. So I'm hoping that she falls asleep during those times and we don't have any interruptions, but you just never know. All right, here's me in a nutshell, Behance page. If you want to check out my work, um, definitely go ahead and do so. Uh, and I'll go from there. All right, I know you're not in here, Melissa, but you can definitely tell me a little bit about yourself in the intro post of Canvas. So in week one, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Follow the prompt in the introductions as you would, you know, within any other class. The only, uh, the only difference is because there's no other peers in this cl uh, classroom, you won't have to worry about responding to, to the you know, two different peers. I will only be responding to you, so we'll just kind of go back and forth. So just kind of answer the prompts there, and it's just going to be a little different. So you're going to have to hang hang tight with us. All right. So as we get into Canvas, just a couple things to take note. Let me open this up a little bit here, so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, about the instructor, you can find my contact information here. So, you know, if you're looking for my, this is actually my cell phone number, um, email address, you can even read a little bit about me here. Skype name is all there. Um, and live lectures, again, are in the live session area here. And they're going to list the days and times um, of our lecture. So week one, we started today 
Wednesday since the class was just published today and I'm starting at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So if you're Mountain Time, it starts at six. Obviously, <laughs> this was a last minute thing. So we really didn't start at, well, we, if you are Mountain Time and you were here live, it would be six o'clock. But um, because this is so last minute, you're probably just gonna listen to the recording. Tomorrow, we're gonna try and meet at 9.30. Um, if that gets pushed back a little bit, I apologize. You know, like I said, I'm trying to uh, squeeze a couple things in here and uh, you know, work, work with the schedule. Um, so go ahead and check out the days and times. If there's any type of shifting, I'm gonna try and tell you as soon as I can um, you know, to let you know, you know, hey, we're gonna have it at this, you know, during this time. So there's no issues there. All right, let's see here. Oh, I'm trying to get this big, but it's kind of reorganizing my information here. Everything else is pretty much the same. You got your daily checkpoints, your shark resources here, your library, student success center, computer support, uh, career preparation, course information, readings and videos, um, and course content list. You also, and just it's good to kind of mention here, in modules, if you go to modules, you can kind of, this is kind of another way to reach all this other information that you have in here. Um, <clears throat> but you have course media. And this is great to have access to all of your required readings and our videos. Um, so make sure you're, you're looking at this every week. It looks like most of these are videos. Um, so week one is pretty extensive in regards to what's, what's required, um, but definitely check it out. There's a lot of great information here. There's um, color theory review. So summary of Newton's color experiments, basic color theory, color vision and art introduction. Summary of the eye psychological. So it goes into like the very basics, the history of color theory. Newton and spec color spectrum. So it's an overall visual illustration of Newton's color theory. Um, so great resources here. And then in lynda.com, you have these short little videos that kind of go into um, some fundamentals here initially into some of the art uh, theory, uh, art eras and uh, art movements kind of connected to um, color theory, how that's all connected. So definitely check that out every week. So week one is here, week two, and so on and so forth. Okay. And again, um, discussion, when you go into week one, and we'll talk about the uh, objectives here in a second. There's a short little video here that you can uh, take a look at, but there is an intro post, like I was talking about, uh, that you can, uh, the next page here, that you can introduce yourself. There is some prompted questions here. So, you know, upon reading all of this, it's asking you to introduce yourself with this, be, with this being color theory, and the most obvious question is, what's your favorite color and why? Do you just have one color or do you have a whole favorite color scheme? How does your favorite color make you feel? Are you drawn to products that feature this color pr prominently? Um, does this color figure into your own personal logo website? If so, can you share a logo and portfolio link with us all? Of course, it'll just be you. Um, it's so funny because I have a four-year-old daughter and she, she loves to tell people her favorite colors, but it's always not just one color, it's like a whole, uh, an array so <laughs> you might have a color scheme to definitely check that out I actually just posted uh, my information here with a quick link to the zoom so um, yeah just don't forget that that's that's in there all right going back to um, the slides here One second. <coughs> I have a little bit of a cold that I'm kind of trying to get rid of here so I apologize if I'm coughing throughout the lecture my voice is going out all right, let's talk about this because typically this is what our deadlines are. So week one, usually you get in by Saturday, Saturday before midnight and then discussion one, you need to have your initial post posted by Wednesday before midnight. But because we're starting kind of late, 
I have an extension on this. So as long as you're getting your work in by, and let's just say, um, let's give the extension of, for, for now, let's do Monday before midnight for both instances. If that's an issue, you let me know. We can kind of work through it and be flexible. We, we need to have something set up. That way you're not falling too far behind on the second week and so on and so forth. So, and I think with what we have, the workload for this week, I don't think it'll be that, that um, difficult and challenging. But if you feel like you need like an extra day, let me know. But let's just say Monday um, by midnight for both of these. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so the objectives which are listed in Canvas as well for this week, and this is the objectives that you'll pretty much be learning as you go through this week. Describe the ways that Newtonian prismatic idea of color production was a precursor to RYB color model. You know how to describe the ways. Identify how color has been used to define visual composition in three part his art history movements. <clears throat> Identify how color has been used to convey emotion in three part past art history movements. Define hues, tints, tones, and shades of color. Describe cool and warm colors and color schemes. So all of this is going to be done not only through the discussion, but also through your projects or quizzes this week, readings, um, all that um, pretty much within this week one. All right, so let's talk about what color theory is. What is it? You know, you kind of think about color theory and what it all entails, but do you actually, could you actually explain it to somebody, you know, in your own words what color theory is? Well, I'm sure you could in some way or another, but uh, I kind of took this from the book here, chapter two, color theory, as they explained it. Color theory is a set of guiding principles that can be used to create harmonious color combinations. These ideas are represented in a variety of diagrams, color wheels, triangles, and charts that help designers understand color interactions, select and combine colors, and construct pleasing and effective palettes. So color theory can be applied to a lot of different industries. But in regards to graphic design, you know, we, we definitely use color. Color is such a huge design element. Color is one of the only design elements that actually can speak to somebody without even having anything written out. Color has a very interesting way to convey an emotion. So that's why it's really important to understand color and uh, the appropriate ways to use it, maybe inappropriate ways to use it, you know, based on the project and the parameters of what you're designing for. But basically color theory are guiding principles to help us create harmonious color combinations. It goes way back, the color wheel here. So you can see the color wheel can be viewed in different ways. There's very interesting and unique ways to view the color wheel just you know, kind of doesn't have to be all the same uh, in general. But there are also definitions or categories of colors based on the color wheel. So we begin with a three-part color wheel. This is the first wheel. What are these colors showing? Well, this is pretty much the primary color wheel. You have the red, yellow, and blue. These are the colors that uh, you can mix together to create secondary colors but you can never uh, mix anything to create these colors. These are just the, the you know, their uh, finest hue there, their, their most primitive hue. Number two color wheel, what are these colors showing in this wheel? So you have not only red, blue, and yellow, you have green, orange, and purple. So we are seeing secondary colors here because if we mix yellow and red, we would get orange, and if we mix red and blue, we would get purple and so on and so forth. Yellow and blue, we would get green. So green, orange, and purple are secondary colors. So just a little refresher here. Number three color wheel, what are these colors in this wheel showing? So it just keeps getting, um, you know, kind of sectioned out. This is the tertiary color wheel. So you're getting the, 
the green, the lime green, the yellow, orange, the orange red, the blue purple type of colors. There's color harmony, okay? So harmony can be defined as a pleasing arrangement of parts, whether it be music, poetry, color, or even an ice cream sundae. You know, everything that kind of goes together very well um, is what color harmony is all about. Some formulas for color harmony. So there are many different, many theories for harmony. The following illustrations and descriptions present some basic formulas. So we have uh, a color scheme based on analogous colors. And analogous colors are any three colors which are side by side on a 12 part color wheel, such as yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange. And usually one of the three colors predominates. So you can see that on the color wheel there with the picture of the, the plant pulling out of those three colors from that plant. You have the analogous colors next to each other on the color wheel. Here are some examples of analogous color scheme imagery, logos, illustrations. So you have that yellow, green next to each other. You have complementary color schemes. So complementary colors are any two colors which are directly opposite each other, such as red and green and red, purple, yellow and green. So in the illustration above, there are several variations of yellow green in the leaves and several variations of red purple in the orchid. These opposing colors create maximum contrast and maximum stability. So you can see that in these examples. <coughs> the orange and, and uh, blue below, you have the Taco Bell mark, yellow and blue or purple and yellow illustration and photograph. You have a color scheme based on nature. So nature provides a perfect departure point for color harmony. In the illustration above, red, yellow, and green create a harmonious design, regardless of whether it's this combination fits into a technical formula for color harmony. So these are great examples of color harmony swatches based on the photograph and the, the the colors pulled from that. And then they're showing the doll version and then the vibrant version of that. So it's kind of neat to see the two different hue variations if it were dolled down like desaturated or oversaturated. Um, color context, so how, what is color context? It basically is how color behaves in relation to other colors and shapes in color theory. So color context, compare the contrast effects of different color backgrounds for the same red square. That's the same exact red square, but when you see it in context of another color around it, it can change what it looks like. It may look maybe darker in one instance, maybe in the, in the black square variation, maybe the red is very bold, whereas the one in the orange, it may be more subdued, kind of like, it not washes out, but it kind of isn't as bright looking. This is really important um, because when you're placing, especially like type on top of color, so if you have a color of type and you're placing it on top of a block of color, it can really affect the way that it looks. And it could be good and it can be bad. So it's always good to kind of note the effects that it makes. Kind of keep in mind the color context. All right, so it was just a little review of color and color theory, just basic fundamental things. Let's take a look at your discussion one. And see if you have any, if you have any questions, let me know. We'll read through this. I know you're not in, in the class now, but if you have any questions, you can email me. <coughs> All right, I'm just gonna read through this. Um, hopefully I won't be coughing too much. So the little background here, or the background uh, copy, it says Sir Isaac Newton in the late 1600s was the first to begin defining our modern understanding of color when he began experimenting with refracting white light into its component colors by using a prism. Newton observed that white light when passed through a prism will 
separate into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Noon was the first, to, first person to term color spectrum to describe this flow of colors. The prism and its accompanying rainbow or demand, on de, rainbow on demand, prompted Newton to begin thinking about just how color is created. Previous to Newton's experiments, people generally considered color to be different amounts of light and dark, and even considered that a prism might be a coloring agent, coloring the light rather than a refracting agent, separating the white light to produce different colors. To counter that argument that the prism was creating the light, Newton also used a prism to refract the beams of color back together and thus produced pure white light once more. For Newton, color became a property of the light that reflects from objects as opposed to a property of the objects themselves. Newton also discovered that every color has a unique angle of refraction that can be used to create the color and beam of colored light. Beam of colored light remains the same no matter how much it is reflected or refracted. By mixing different colors of light, Newton discovered that mixing the color primaries of red, yellow, and blue could create new colors. He published his research officially in the book titled Optics in 1704 and used the wheel to show how mixing different amounts of colored light would produce different colors. Though Newton initially referred to light rays in his color model, artists also began mixing primary colors, colored pigments according to Newton's methods and discovered that it would work with physical, it, it too would work with physical paint and ink. Inspired by Newton, Newton artists began to, cr to create color wheels using red, yellow, and blue as their primary colors. From these colors, they were, they were able to mix colors to create the full spectrum within the color wheel. In this way, Newton's explorations into the way prisons were able to separate light beams was a direct precursor to RYB, color model embraced by artists. In design today, whenever we create items that are meant for display on screens, we make Newton proud. All colors and shapes we design with are projected by the light of the screen. As you quickly learn, if, if your screen breaks, there is no light, then there is no design. The prompt for this, so for this discussion, imagine that you have been hired by a museum to help them create the, the signage and act as a consultant on an exhibit about the history of color. They begin the exhibit with the color wheel composed of the primary colors, so you have red, yellow, and blue, but give no mention to Newton or the idea of reflect, refracting light into its component elements. How might you explain to them the ways that Newtonian prismatic idea of color production was a precursor to the RYB color model that, that has become so popular? What are some ways that the exhibit could use physical objects to give exhibit attendees practical insights into the ways prisms and light work? In what ways and through what objects today do we see colors that are created fully from light rays? And how might the museum exhibit take advantage of these elements? So thinking about that, you know, what are some of the ways that exhibits could use physical objects? You know, kind of like discuss what they could use to show their attendees how a prison works with the light. Um, and then explain in what ways through what objects today we see color that are created fully from light rays. You know, think about that. Think about technology today. And then how, how the museum exhibits so it takes advantage of these elements. So really kind of dive into, you know, you know, screen usage here. And this talks about for your citation, you might use articles that show examples of how Newton's use of prisms impacted early color wheel creation. You can also find articles from experts that suggest today, today designing for screen usage relies heavily on understanding the power of light and light rays. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably do color theory, R, Y, me, infographic. Let's look up the infographic here. If they see if there's any infographics. Infographics are great because you can get the points through um, and, and visually, 
experience to knit and for rabbi. Okay, here we go. This might be a good one here, let's see. Just looking up resources that you could check out that you could definitely use for this. Um, oh, Pinterest, okay, great. So you might go on to Pinterest and look up some ideas here. This is kind of linking me to this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of looking for something else, but let's see. Oh, here's visual examples you can actually show as well. Um, I'm not quite seeing exactly what I want to show you here, but you can definitely get some ideas by um, by just doing some research online. Some of these are just basically what the color theory is. This is a prism kind of showing you that how that works. <laughs> Let's see if prism. Here's the prism we all know is like that Pink Floyd cover, right? So think about how you can, what, what we use today that utilizes that, okay? Think about technology. I'm not quite seeing anything in here, but you definitely can um, take a look at uh, technology today and the power of lights and light rays, all right? And you will be posting this initial post um, by Monday, by midnight, I will be reviewing your work on Monday. Like I said, this is the extension. You won't be responding to any po post peers or, or peer posts because you're the only one in here. So just do the best that you can to obviously um, do everything that you can besides the response post and the reply requirements. So your one main post has to be 200 plus words, two APA citations, and a reference. But as far as the response, you, don't, you can respond to me, that's fine. But that's kind of where it stops there, so. All right, let me know if you have any questions. But um, like I said, just go into your course resources, read up on all of the background uh, of Newton and get some great supportive examples to show in your discussion post. All right, um, don't forget there's so many different meanings and we're kind of looking at the color red here. We're gonna look at red, yellow, and blue, I believe I have on these slides. There's different ways cultures see different colors. So I broke this up into RGB, I'm sorry, RYB, um, and two different cultures, Western versus Eastern. So it's kind of interesting when you, if you're designing for something universal, like a brand that may be known in the United States or the you know, Western part of the world, and then maybe it's being sold in the Eastern part of the world, you have to be aware of the colors that you're using because you don't want to come across communicating in, a, in an inappropriate way. Um, so you want to make sure you know that the color that you're using, if it's a universal type of a brand, that you're using it appropriately. So Western meaning for red would be energy, excitement, action. That's kind of the emotion, the, the, the vibe that you get from it. Danger, love, passion, a warning to stop, anger. You have it connected to Christmas combined with green, Valentine's Day. Eastern culture, red meaning is prosperity, good fortune, worn by brides, and symbol of joy when combined with white. So it's kind of interesting to see the two. China, the color of red is good luck and celebration, vitality, happiness, long life, used as a wedding color as well, used in many ceremonies from funerals to weddings, uh, used for festive occasions, traditionally worn on Chinese New Year to bring luck and prosperity. In India, color of purity, fertility, love, beauty, wealth, opulence, and power, used in wedding ceremonies, a sign of a married woman, and also color of fear and fire. 
Then you have all these other regions here. You have Thailand, color for Sunday is red. Japan is life, anchor, and danger. Cherokees, success and triumph. South Africa, color of mourning. Nigeria, usually reserved for ceremonies worn by chiefs. And Christian, sacrifice, passion, and love. Okay, I thought this was going to be broken up in RGB or RYB, but it looks like just red. So focusing on that, there's um, cultures see colors differently. This is a really cool resource. I'll try to post this on the announcements too so you can actually click on it and view it. But this, this is an infographic showing the colors and culture. So you can visually look on the, right, uh, the left side of all the colors in this beautiful circle here and it's numbered and then on the right hand side you can kind of find the key to it and uh, you know see kind of what's what's up with that I can't really see it real close again I know I've seen it before but I can't pick out oh okay it's breaking it up in cultures and then also um, adjectives that go with that I will post this in announcements so you guys you can uh, look at it kind of closer in in review here <laughs> All right, let's go forward and take a look at your assignment one. Um, and, you know, these lectures might be a little shorter because of me being the only one talking, by the way. So just kind of bear with me. All right, so assignment one. All right, so choosing a color scheme is often one of the most challenging aspects of creating a design piece. Combining color together in a way that attracts attention, conveys an appropriate message, and is unexpected enough to be memorable takes practice and much trial and error. That said, there are many places where you can look for color scheme inspiration. In this assignment, we will look um, how, at how artists in past historical context use color combinations in their own visual narratives to define visual composi composition and convey emotion. We can see an example of how, of, we can see an example of how color defines composition in Vermeer's classic 1665 painting, Girl with a Red Hat. So let's take a look at that. So you can definitely tell the blue, like the blue and the yellow kind of do the complementary colors and then the pop of the red hat's kind of monochromatic and then the pop of the red hat there. Interesting. Vermeer uses a bright red hat to frame and set apart the features of his main subject. The contrast of the red against the darker background grabs attention and guides the eye through the canvas. Let's go back to that again. We can see an example of how color conveys emotion in Picasso's 1901 painting, Woman with Folded Arms. Let's take a look at that over here. Um, Picasso uses various shades of cool blues to create a feeling of deep sadness and depression. This feeling is echoed by the posture of his subject and works to give the painting a deep melancholy and heavy feeling. Kind of interesting. Just as Newton viewed the impact of passing white light through a prism and observing the colors that emerged, <laughs> so too you can so can you use the tool of Illustrator as your prism to see what dominant colors will emerge when considering past artists and art movements. Then you will use the color schemes that emerge to design a business card to, to, for each of the three artists. Your goal is to be inspired by each artist's unique use of color in the overall composition and incorporate that compositional usage into your own color scheme. So for this assignment, create three business cards for historic artists using color schemes for each drawn directly from their paintings. Okay, so you're going to do three business cards for historic artists. You're going to first visit the digital archives of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get rid of some of my tabs here. Okay, so you're going to scroll through this and kind of pick out ones you like. I kind of like this one. And we're going to wait until this is loaded here. 
Oh, looks like you can't really, let me click and drag it over here. There we go. Okay, it looks like we're gonna click on this. Digital archives. Hmm. Let's see if we have digital archives here. Get rid of this little box here. Art, collection, timeline of history. Trying to get to a, uh, a main area here we can pull from. Okay, I guess this is it. Hmm. All right, so let's take a look at All right, so we can just scroll through here and choose artwork. I'm trying to pick something that's not, yeah, here we go, like a Vincent Van Gogh. Interesting composition there. That's all um, zoomed in. <laughs> it looks like this site takes a lot of load here. So choose three. If you know kind of what you're looking for, maybe you could type it in a keyword. So, you know, scroll all through here. Let's see if we can actually just say, Meanings. Okay, so you can filter that out. That's good. You won't be searching here forever. All right. You can kind of refine it as you go through here too. Paintings. Let's write in here, you know, object types. Let's look up maybe like, um, <coughs> Salvador. No. I'm spelling that first. 
one of them. Moon dolly. Okay. Looks like Hmm. So I guess it'll be a little bit of a pain, but at least I got a couple here um, to kind of show you. So what you're going to do is pick out three artists. You're going to have to peruse through there a little bit. Browse through the collections when you have found three items from three different art history movements, for example, Impressionism, Constructivism, Renaissance. Okay, that's what it wants you to do. So you could definitely go in here and um, choose the era here. <coughs> Um, so you have three different art movements, okay? You're going to create 11 by 17 document in InDesign and place each image in, onto a separate page with three empty squares next to it. Okay, so let's do that. 11 by 17, so I'm going to go... And I'm going to share my screen in a second here. Give me one minute. All right. So it says here, create an 11 by 17 document and place each image onto a separate page with three empty squares next to it. So you're gonna have three pages. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do my squares here first. And I'm gonna orient this so it's the other way. Long way, so landscape. So we'll do four squares total. And then we'll align these squares appropriately. So just bring up on our window. Um, align under object. Okay. And we can pull those over here. And then what I would do is just duplicate this. So you have three pages. All right. And then go ahead and place, go file, place, command D. The image, I'm going to put the Van Gogh in here first. Okay, it's a little bigger here. May not fit in the square totally, but you get the idea. All right. Name your, um, oops, name four. Name your file based on how they want you to name it there. And then what you're gonna do <laughs> after you place those three in there, you're gonna um, use the eyedropper tool and pull out color swatches of the three most dominant colors. Fill each of the squares and add these new colors to your swatch panel. So select this square, take the eyedropper tool, and I would probably select the main color in here would be, I like this gold color. the first one. The second one would be oops, the green, right? And then the third would be the blue. Let's grab This one again. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so that would be the first example there. Second one, and so on and so forth. So you'll get three different movements here. Place them in there. Use the eyedropper tool as shown.
Okay, and then we're gonna add them to our swatch panel. So I'll go up to window and show swatches, which would be under your color. Okay. And we're gonna select that first one and we're gonna double click on the fill and say add RGB swatch and click okay. Same thing here, double click, add RGB swatch, click okay. Select it here, add RBG, RGB swatch, click okay. So you got the first round of swatches in there for the first example. Finally, create a second InDesign document that is a business card size for your artist business cards. Use colors in identical ways to show to um, use colors in identical ways to how the artist use color to express visual hierarchy and guide your eye through the art object. For example, make the artist name the, the same color as the brightest, most visual dominant color. Um, your, your following elements should be, and I'm gonna copy and paste this in here. I know you guys can't see what I'm, or you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna post this in here so that I have it to go off of. Actually, I'm gonna copy this into another document. So this, this is one document that will be three pages of three different art movement examples, pulled swatches saved into your palette. Then you're gonna do a completely new document, so go file new. And you're gonna, this size is gonna be three inches by two and a half. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Not this size, let's redo that. Three and a half by two. My bad, I was kind of going off a different size there. Margins and columns, we'll set that a little smaller, so we'll do 0.25. So this document is three and a half by two inches. It's the standard size of a business card. I'm just gonna name this card. I want to see what it says in there. How you save that. Okay, the first one should be assignment one, first number one, and then this is two. Okay, so we'll name that as two. <clears throat> All right. And you're gonna do three of these as well. So we're gonna do, um, let's see where our page is here. Duplicate this three times. <coughs> okay, so Vincent Van Gogh would be the first, the first one here. So, we would use the colors from there into there. All right, so I'm just gonna post this in here. There's a way you can Im import, uh, let me see, color swatches. I think they, these are already imported here, so we're good. We don't even have to paste that in there. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to just give this, you can give it a typeface that matches the um, artist. But you're going to create a business card. So I'm going to do a solid color of maybe this color here. Adjust the letting. Start with that. Play around with the alignments and all of that good stuff. Okay. <laughs> Where did I? Uh... Use this in the second one here. Hold on. Okay.
I think I lost it. All right, I'm going to copy and paste this again in here so I have it. So name of artist, title, artist name and title. So you can have your name as a title in here. So I'm just going to do Ankle Biss. Um, Go at artist .com. Okay, you can do Vincent.com. <coughs> Actually, we'll just do like painter. That shouldn't be my name, it should be artist name, title, what his title is. Um, Geometric shapes, decorative elements, color flow is appropriate. Okay. So kind of make it make it what you think it should look like with the colors that we're given. You can do something very, very, very simple. You know, as simple as something like this. There we go. And let me show you it with the preview so you can kind of see what it looks like. So you can do something like that, where it's very, very simple. That would be an example for the one of the um, one of the examples for the three that you're going to be doing. All right, I'm trying to find another piece of art here. Here's one. And I'll have to copy his name because or her name. All right, so I'll go back to this part and I'm gonna copy or place in the second one that I just found here. They're actually very similar to the same colors as Van Gogh. And again, I'm just going to grab the colors from there. <coughs> the main colors. And then I'm going to add these to my swatches. All right, so that's the second one. So I would do this one with a different name. And you could do different type if you want. If you want to do something very simple, let's do universe for this one. Let me make it big. Very big. Okay, let's try like a darker option here. Orientation can be different. You know, think about how you can design each one of these differently. <laughs> but always keep in mind, you know, the, the composition and how you're, you're doing your Cool. That's a little hard to read. 
a little bit more spaced out there. All right, and then maybe like one line would be the rest of the information, so it'd be different. Um, green universe. Ultra condensed, a little bit bigger here. And we'll put like a little line here in between these. Centered. Going to be able to read it, right? And then give a little bit more of a and what we'll do for this one is the green, do like a little rotation with this one. Slightly. Oops. Trying something different here. Maybe what we'll do is we'll make this blue and this gold. Play around with the colors. Oh wait, you know what? This isn't the colors I imported over here. That's not the colors I want. Okay, I just paste them in here and I got it. All right. Sorry guys, let's do a light. I'm gonna say this looks different. <laughs> All right, that looks good. Something like that. So that can be one of the one of the examples too. Pull this down a little bit. Okay, so that could be. Example number two. So you got one, two, one, two. That was a painted plaster. I'd have to change her name here. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Oh, that came up quick. Now, obviously, I would have to change her name here. I'm going to maybe just use her last name. Painter, same thing. Good to go. All right. Let's see if I can find another one. But you get the idea. Hopefully, um, it's not too hard here. <clears throat> Try to run one more painting. Hmm. Don't really have too many. Newer ones here, hold on.
And then you have to be artwork, like any type of artwork. Let me see if there's any restrictions here. Three items. So it doesn't have to be like a painting, I guess. So that kind of opens it up. So you can definitely, you know, grab something of a different era that might be like more of a of a um an artifact rather than a painting I'm trying to grab something here there's a bottle there's one that has interesting colors Some are very, very just, you know, monochromatic, but I'm trying to find an interesting one here. Okay, let's grab this one. This is a painting too. It's a different color. Not sure who the person is. I'm just gonna copy the the credit line. Actually, I'm gonna push on gentlemen. Doesn't say who did this. Oh wait. Let me get one where it actually has the artist's name on it because I think that'll be kind of confusing. All right. I know you can't see what I'm doing, I apologize. Um, I'm going to just use this one as my third example. I, think, I believe it looks, I think it is a painting. Yes. <clears throat> there. And I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and grab the Nice blue color, a nice, I like how that teal color, and then a lighter color, just like a skin tone. Okay, we're going to save this. So this is, um, this is what the first project should look like. The second one. Just in this um, paste in the three swatches here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's do this one a little differently. Let's do blue. Let's do. Oh, you know what? I didn't add these to the swatch. That's why they're not going in there. So let's add these. When I pasted them in there, um, the last set of swatches, that's why it wasn't going in. So now it actually went in there. Did it go in? There we go. So I just plugged it in there. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> let's do a full, you don't have to do a full bleed, it's just kind of what I decided to do. And then we'll do, you could do a circle. You don't necessarily have to do a square here. All up to you. All right, the guy's name is Manol, Leonard, Linus, Linison. Um, And we'll do narrow aerial. Let 
very, 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 very just subtle here. Green color, area, too bold. And we'll do light justified. There we go. And then we'll change the name here. We're gonna make him a little bit bigger here though. Get like a focal point. This is in that green color. You can't really see it real good. It's like a green. Let's do color in that. Just do a little boldness there. So yeah, just play around with it. See what you see what you can do. Just different things. Um, I'm gonna make maybe this one a little more bold. Play around with it. All right. So that would be. <coughs> what you would do for the second part. And then when you're ready to save it out, and I think my, my actual computer is dying here, I need my, my charger cord, you are going to zip, you're gonna create PDFs of both. So you're gonna to go to your first file and say file save as. Actually, you don't even have to do high quality, just go file save as, we'll do smallest file size, desktop save, all pages export. Same thing on this one, file save as, smallest file size, desktop, all pages export. I'm gonna have to plug in here, give me one second. There we go. And then once we're done with that, we're going to open our file up just to take a look at it here. Make sure we did everything right. Okay, let me hide all my stuff here so I can see what I'm doing. All right. So this is the um, PDF that I just made. Let me show you the first part here. Okay, there's my three different art pieces. And then here are my three different business cards. So then you're going to zip that. So if you don't know how to zip, let me share my desktop. <coughs> Sorry, my desktop's kind of dirty or chaotic you're going to select both pdfs and you're going to do a control click or file compress two items and then you could just name this your last name as long as you have these named correctly you're good and once you zip it you could just have a very simple last name dot zip is fine and that's what you will submit for your final project 
All right. Just don't forget, let me share my the Canvas screen again of the instructions. Don't forget to um, save it appropriately here. So the submission requirement instructions, you're going to export both InDesign files as PDFs with the following names, and then you're going to submit them in a zipped folder. Okay. And then if you have any questions about, uh, you know, how I'm going to grade it, go down to the rubrics and take a look at how this will be evaluated. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, well, I'm going to wrap it up. And hopefully, you know, hopefully you're in here getting situated. Let me know if you have any questions. Get your discussion going. Um, and, you know, again, if you have any questions, let me know. This is, we're going to work together on getting this first deadline in and um, submitted. Tomorrow we're going to meet up. Um, it might not be as long either, but we'll kind of go over some things. Um, for assessment one and uh, if you can make that lecture that'd be great if not no big deal you can listen to the recording and I'll I'll be talking to you soon all right thanks Melissa